Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another Historic deck, and Historic has also been shaken up by a new ban today. Field of the Dead is now officially banned in Historic, so that might mean an increase in control decks or decks that try to play a longer game, since those strategies weren't really viable with the presence of Field of the Dead in the format. And speaking of presence, today's deck is called Paladin's Presence. It's an infinite combo deck featuring Famished Paladin and Presence of Gond. It's not the first time we featured Famished Paladin in an infinite combo deck, the 2 mana 3 3 Vampire Knight that doesn't untap during your untap step, and whenever you gain life, we can untap the Famished Paladin. And if we combine that with Presence of Gond, a 3 mana enchantment aura from Jumpstart, and the enchanted creature can tap to make a 1 1 Green Elf Warrior Creature token. So if we put Presence of Gond on our Famished Paladin, it can now make a 1 1 Elf Warrior Creature token. And then all that we need is a way to gain life whenever a creature or a token enters the battlefield under our control. So that's where Soul Warden comes in handy, a 1 mana 1 1 Human Cleric that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield, we gain 1 life. That also includes the opponent's creatures. So now whenever we tap the Famished Paladin to make a 1-1 token, we gain 1 life with the Soul Warden, untap the Paladin, so we can essentially make infinite tokens and also gain infinite life, and that's usually good enough to beat most decks in Historic. So we can pull off this combo as early as turn 3 by going turn 1 Soul Warden, turn 2 Famished Paladin, turn 3 play Presence of Gond, and start going off. So that's the basic premise of the deck, now let's take a look at the rest of the deck here. At 1 mana we also have the full play set of Selfless Savior as a preemptive way of protecting the Famished Paladin, since we can sacrifice our Selfless Savior and target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Then we've got our full play set of Soul Warden, and also the full play set of Adventurous Impulse as a way of finding our Famished Paladin and Soul Warden, as we get to look at the top 3 cards of our library, reveal a creature card or land card, and put it into our hand. And our final 1 drop is Lenor Elves as a mana accelerant, which can potentially speed up the combo if we don't have the perfect draw. And then at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Anointer Priest from Amonkhet Remastered. This essentially does the same job as Soul Warden in terms of enabling the infinite combo. It's a 2 mana 1-3 Human Cleric, and whenever a creature token enters a battlefield under our control, we gain 1 life. So this also works with the Famished Paladin Presence of Gaunt combo. And for 4 mana we can also embalm Anointer Priest if it's in our graveyard, and then we get to make a 1-3 token, that's essentially Anointer Priest. So if the opponent has removal for the Priest, we can still get it back. And then we've got our full place of Famished Paladin. No replacements for the Paladin, that's why having Selfless Savior to protect it is so important. And then we also have four copies of Bond of Flourishing, which is doing a similar job to Adventure's Impulse. We can look at the top three cards of our library and reveal a permanent card and put it into our hands and we also gain three life. And unlike Adventure's Impulse, we can also find enchantments with it, so we can also find our Presence of Gond. And then besides our 4 copies of Presence of Gond, we also have 4 copies of Heliod's Pilgrim, a 3 mana 1-2 Human Cleric, which when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for an aura card and put it into our hand, so this will help us find the Presence of Gond, essentially giving us 8 copies of Presence of Gond in the deck. So the deck is pretty consistent despite being a 3 card combo deck, just because we have essentially 8 copies of the life gain effect and 8 copies of Presence of Gond, the only card that's unique is the Famished Paladin. And the reason we're playing Anointer Priest instead of Vajani's Presence as another way of enabling the combo is that we can also find Anointer Priest with our Adventure's Impulse, and every now and then having a 1-3 creature that can attack and block can also come in handy. And then the mana base is very straightforward, 8 basic planes, 8 basic forests, 4 Sun Petal Grove, and 4 Temple Garden. We could potentially play a few copies of Castle Ardenvale, which also has good synergy in the deck, although that does potentially slow us down as we will have fewer untapped white sources on turn 1, so we maybe won't be able to curve out with our Soul Warden or Selfless Savior as often. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. We've got all the combo pieces except for Famished Paladin, but no way of searching it up, so this might be a mulligan. Alright, this is slightly better. We've got two ways of gaining a life, presence and an impulse to dig for Paladin. Either getting rid of a creature or a land here. Probably get rid of a land and keep redundant creatures, although could also just keep the Anointer Priest. Bottom the Soul Warden, so if the Priest dies I can still embalm it for four mana and then having three lands is useful. So let's do that instead. And then turn one I can Adventure's Impulse, look for Paladin. Uh, 
And it's gonna be Helios Pilgrim instead. Still probably better than a land here. Opponents seem to have something for one mana there. Treasure hunts, so they probably had a cycling land in hand. Finds another treasure hunt. Alright, so this is gonna be a race to assemble our combo as soon as possible. I guess I'll thin out the deck with Heliot's Pilgrim, although I guess we know three cards on the bottom that we don't want to shuffle back. I guess just attack for one. Treasure Hunt finds a Thassa's Oracle. That might buy us an extra turn. Alright, there's a Paladin, so... Next turn I get to gain infinite life and make infinite tokens. Although my opponent can just win the game, even if I have infinite life and infinite tokens in play. So I actually need an extra attack step afterwards. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that. But let's find out. Alright, let's go for it. Our opponent didn't have any copies of Mystic Sanctuary to put the treasure hunt back on top of their deck. So they might actually just be stuck here with four lands. So the opponent's best bet is if their next draw step is treasure hunts and then they can just win the game with Thassa's Oracle. I guess we can just do this in the opponent's turn, let them take their draw step and then end of turn we can just make infinite tokens. Yeah, if their draw is not treasure hunts, they're just dead. Just gonna make a couple extra tokens here and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, just in time here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. So we're just missing a way of gaining a life. And we've got eight of those in the deck, so yeah, I'll keep. And then a third land would also be useful. Well, let's see what we're up against. Goblins. Alright. The goblin deck doesn't have a ton of interaction, plus selfless savior can potentially stop one gem palm from killing my stuff. Probably could have gotten away with one damage here, since they're probably not gonna trade for the prospector. But yeah, my opponent could just play turn three Muxus and kill me if they get lucky. So I think this turn I'll play the presence of Gaunt, and then next turn we can go digging for a life gain creature. Sure, I guess I could also Impulse, because if I find Soul Warden, that can give me a lot of life if the opponent makes some Goblin tokens. Not sure which is better here. This is definitely more mana efficient if I need to Impulse multiple times next turn. So let's just Presence now. Alright, do they have the turn 3 Muxus? They do. Alright. No haste, please. Alright, they hit a Krenko, but no haste enabler. Although, if they have one in hand, they can still play it thanks to the second Prospector here. Alright, it doesn't appear like they have one, that's good. And there's Priest, so that should be game. Our opponent can make a lot of goblins, 
but as it turns out, Infinity still beats a lot. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? We're just missing the Famished Paladin, although I only have the Adventurous Impulse to go digging for it, so I think I'll still try it. Do have Selfless Savior to protect the Paladin. And... Probably just play... Lenor Elves here. And then next turn we can Impulse, plus maybe play Priest. Opponent on Black White Zombies, alright. So let's Impulse. I think I just take the Forests, I've got double presence already. Play Priests. And then I can potentially put one Presence of Gond in play with double Priest to gain two life. That will keep us alive for a while. I'll take three. Liliana, untouched by death. Can't quite kill my Anointer Priest this turn, but maybe next turn with a third zombie. And it also gets around my Selfless Savior, since it's minus X minus X and not destroy. <laughs> I have a deliciously morbid idea. All right, play another priests. I will hang on to my presence of Gaunt here, and we'll pass. They can get back an unconventional tactics if they'd like. And then our priest is gonna be killed by Liliana. Also, we can embalm it next turn. And there's Famish Paladin, so I get to play both here. Although they can minus Liliana again on the Paladin, although they don't know about the presence of Gaunt in my hand. It's gonna be another Midnight Reaper. Liliana minuses on Anointer Priests. So that's gonna work out nicely. Get to untap, and uh, yeah, let's go for it. Presence of Gaunt on Famished Paladin. Good Selfless Savior to protect us. And it's time to make some tokens. Could even uh, embalm the other Anointer Priest to gain double the life, but yeah, opponent packs it in. Infinite tokens, infinite life. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? No green mana, no paladin, no way of gaining life, and no way of digging for those cards. So that's a mulligan. Alright, this hand's better. No white mana, but Impulse can also find lands, and then we're just missing Presence of Gaunt or Heliot's Pilgrim to search it up. 
and then probably get rid of one of the Paladins. It's better to keep double Paladin against a turn one Thoughtseize as opposed to the Savior, but otherwise I think I'd rather have the Savior. And grab a Plains. Get to go Elf plus Savior. This might be a gross peril incoming. And there's presence, alright, so we've got the entire combo here. Just missing white mana to play both my two drops this turn. But we're still gonna lead with Paladin, that way if I draw Soul Warden or an extra land next turn we get to combo off. Probably could have played Forest first to play around Quench, although more likely to be a gross peril here. Puts a Sacred Foundry in play, alright. I'm curious now. Blood Sun. Okay. So they're probably playing with Lotus Field. So time for Priests. My Temple Garden comes into play untapped thanks to the Blood Sun. And we get to combo off. Infinite tokens, infinite life. Even if they play a sweeper next turn, I can use my savior to give Paladin indestructible and then embalm the priest and then I can set up the combo once again. So we'll pass a turn and then end of turn we can keep going for it. Technically I should just do it all main phase in case my opponent has some instant speed interaction. But we'll save our opponent some time in case they have a sweeper or if they're just dead. Alright, Wrath of God. So I can gain more life here if I wanted to, but it's probably just a waste of time. Embalm the priests. And we'll keep going. Alright, I'll make a lethal army this time. It doesn't take too much clicking, luckily. Alright, we'll make 20 tokens and that should be plenty. Pass a turn, hope there's no second Wrath of God. And even if there is a Wrath, I could always gain infinite life. It's gonna be Hour of Promise. Getting double Lotus Fields. It's a lot of mana, but they seem pretty dead here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got Paladin plus Priest, so just missing Presence of Gaunt or Helios Pilgrim. And we even have Impulse to go digging, so I'll keep. Savior is also going to be useful. So next turn I'm probably going to play Priest, and then turn 3 can go Paladin plus Savior. Hopefully no thought cease to take away my Paladin. It's gonna be Meyer Triton milling a copy of Gate to the Afterlife, so this is a Godfur's Gift Gate deck. And there's a Helid's Pilgrim, perfect. So I don't expect a ton of removal out of the Gate deck, although it's not impossible. Maybe I should play the Paladin in case they're playing the version with uh, Brain Maggots. Yeah, let's just play the Paladin now. 
At 4 mana they might have Ravenous Chupacabra, but at 3 mana I don't expect anything that can kill the Paladin. There's a Scarab God in there too. So this turn... I could play the Savior to protect against a potential Chupacabra. Doesn't help if it's a Hostage Taker, because it just steals my creature. But I guess I wouldn't be able to combo next turn anyway. Even if I Pilgrim for my presence, unless I top deck Soul Warden. So might as well go Savior plus Priest here. And then next turn Pilgrim can get Presence of Gaunt. And a turn after we can combo off. So Amory could get back a gate this turn. Mills with the Secret Keeper first. And there's a gate. Alright, so next turn they should be able to transform gate into gift. And then get back like a Champion of Wits or Scarab God. So we'll Pilgrim. So everything is in place to combo off next turn. Champion of Wits main phase. How many creatures in the graveyard currently? Five, so I guess they needed to put one more creature in the graveyard. But if they have a lance and discard a creature here, they'll be fine. Discards Waker of Waves and Godfather's Gift. Waker of Waves actually stops my tokens from dealing infinite damage here. So it's actually kind of good against me. Although, can they beat infinite life and infinite chum blockers? Probably not. Gets back a Champion of Wits. So we'll see if they concede to the combo or if they want to keep playing. Sure, I'll take four. Could play another priest first, but that would also mean more triggers, so we'll see if this is good enough. Opponent would definitely end up decking first because they've already milled a few cards. Alright, so I guess I'll play another priest and gain more life. And I'll quickly go to the settings to auto-order triggered abilities. I guess my opponent could have a Massacre Worm, which would be kind of interesting. So maybe I should just stop here and then see what happens. And then I can still keep going end of turn if needed. Alright, pass the turn. Gift happens, opponent gets the Waker Waves back, presumably. Yep. 
But yeah, can they beat Infinite Life? Scarab God, sure. That can start draining me, but doesn't get around infinite life. So, not sure if I'm supposed to do anything else here. I guess I can play another Priests. Opponent has 31 cards in library, so this is going to take a while if they want to play it out. Maybe they have a way of removing the Paladin and then wiping the board with like a Massacre Worm. And then they can potentially still kill me. Because then infinite life is kind of counteracted by the Massacre Worm. Although with triple Priest in play I'm still gaining 3 per token. And only lose 2 for the Massacre Worm for each token. So I'm still netting infinite life eventually. So they would need double Massacre Worm I guess. Another Waker Waves, sure. Gets back a Secret Keeper. Make some blocks. Not sure what else I'm digging for here. Soul Warden, sure. So now I'm getting four life for each token I make. Another Waker Waves. Got Pharaoh's Gift triggers. Gets back. Champion of Wits. It's gonna speed up the process of milling the opponent at least. So they have 25 cards remaining. I guess I'll make some more tokens. Make some blocks. Just gonna pass. Scarab God has also been scrying in the meantime, so if they had an answer. They probably would have found one by now. Carry on grub, sure. 
Mills for four. Another Waker of Waves. My creatures are getting smaller and smaller. Thanks with all. Let's make some more blockers. Looks like my opponent may have disconnected here. Alright, should have enough blockers now. Um, I hope I blocked everything here, but uh, I think we'll be fine. Nah, let's pass the turn. Opponent still has 20 cards remaining in library, so still gonna take a second if they want to play it out. All right, and our opponent packs it in, so despite preventing infinite damage from our tokens, we still manage to gain infinite life and make infinite blockers, which is enough to win the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a pretty nice opening hand, just missing one of our life gain enablers, Soul Warden or Priest, and we have a Bond of Flourishing to find one. Let's see if we're up against the goblins. We are. Goblins is usually a good matchup, and there's a priest, so we're looking at a turn 4 win. Of course, the goblin deck can have the nut draw and kill us on turn 3, but uh, if they've got a slower turn 4, turn 5 win, we usually have enough time to assemble the combo if we've got a reasonable hand. So I guess I might as well go Priest plus Savior this turn. And then next turn it's combo time. It's just gonna be a ringleader. Find some Muxus and another Chieftain. And with double Selfless Saver in play, I can even play around a Jump Palm in the opponent's turn. So I could just pass a turn here and uh, just make an infinite army end of turn. I think our opponent got the message that we can make infinite tokens if we wanted to. If I didn't have selfless saver in play I would probably be forced to just make even more tokens main phase. Because otherwise I could potentially jump palm, kill one of my creatures and break up the combo. but I think we'll be fine.
So I gotta make 20 more tokens here, more or less. Alright, that should be enough, and then we can untap and attack with all our tokens for the win. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand is missing our Famished Paladin. And I don't have any way of searching it up, so I think this is a mulligan. Facing Gigantha could also be a burn deck for what it's worth. Alright, this looks better. I'll keep, and then... If I am up against the burn deck, elves might not be the most reliable. Although if they're playing Gigantha as companion, I don't need to worry about Goblin Chain Whirler. So it's maybe still better to keep the elf over Temple Garden. Alright, never mind, so it's not a burn deck after all. Selassie Guild Gates. So what's my game plan here? Do I play the Paladin this turn? I guess I do. Could be some sort of gate ramp deck with a couple sweepers. In that case I do need to assemble the combo quickly. going to be a growth spiral and an ores of guild gates all right so at least i don't need to worry about gates ablaze killing my paladin next turn so for now we can go digging with bonds find a back of paladin i guess i could have attacked for three firsts And then next turn we can bond to try and find Presence or Heliot's Pilgrim. And Maze's End is an alternate win condition to potentially beat Infinite Life. Alright, I'll make sure to attack this time. And Selfless Savior, I guess, is my best bet. So still missing Presence of Gons or Heliot's Pilgrim. Can embalm Anointer Priest and use Savior to protect the Paladin. Could be open the gates for red mana into a Gates Ablaze. It's going to be a tapped. Red source. And grazer, sure. Another maze's end. And Jagalthine hands. I guess we're just sending in everyone. I probably don't want to send a paladin, because if I top deck presence of guns, then I wouldn't be able to combo off. So is it time for a Gates Ablaze now? Plans I gain three. It's gonna be a root first. So they're getting close to assembling all ten gates. How many do they have now? Four, five, six. So they need a couple more. Alright, let's see if we can find a Pilgrim. 
There is a Pilgrim. I'm still gonna be one mana short of actually playing Presence. opponent couldn't have settled the wreckage because of Gigantha, otherwise that could be a reason not to attack here. And I guess Gigantha also excludes Wrath of God, so Gates of Blaze is probably the most likely sweeper for them. There's the Gates Ablaze, so probably, let's see, I could also save the Priests because I have another Famished Paladin in hand, but I probably just want to save the Paladin, Embalm the Priests. And then they can escape Uro. It's gonna be a Gigantha instead. So, let's see, how many gates is this? Two, three, four, five, six. So they, even if they double activate Mazes and next turn, they're not gonna have enough gates in play. We even drew the Soul Warden to speed things up. So I can already make infinite tokens this turn. So they'll need another Gates Ablaze here. make around 20 tokens so we can still kill them through the 3 life from Uro. And I kind of have to do it main phase in case the opponent draws instant speed interaction for the Paladin. That right, should be enough for now. Let's see if they have another sweeper. If they do, we probably lose the game. Haha, <laughs> it's gonna be Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Not quite enough here, I'm afraid. Let's make one more token for luck. But I think they're still dead here. I guess we'll play it safe and make a couple more here. Because they can still use Gigantha potentially to cast something. Not sure what it could be. Alright, that's probably enough. Gigantha attacks. Steam vents untapped. And we finally get to attack with our tokens. Aw, everyone keeps conceding before we get to deal lethal damage with our tokens. Alright, and we got some goodies here as well. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, our Famish Paladin infinite combo deck is a lot more consistent than you would think at first glance, because it is a three-card combo, and we only have four copies of Famish Paladin, but with all the search effects and with the redundancy that the Helios Pilgrim brings and then the eight life gain effects, it's actually not too difficult to assemble the combo, and there's very few decks that can actually beat it once we do assemble it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.